When I say the words Sim City, what do you think of? Do you hearken back to a simpler time when computer monitors weighed more than you did? Or do you think of a bygone game series that was one of the most influential of its kind, but has since lost its luster? Or maybe it's a little bit of both. For me, when I think of the SimCity game series, I think back to when I was a kid, and one of the only things my hand-me-down Windows 98 could run were games I received from Sim Mania 3. All of them are games that I cherish greatly, but one game stood out above all the others, Sim City 3000. Let's not get ahead of ourselves though, because we have a long way to go before we get there. Join me in this multi-part series as I walk through the rise and fall of the world's most famous city building simulator. Will Wright was born in Atlanta, Georgia in the United States on January 20th, 1960. He showed particular interests in all sorts of subjects, from economics and history to architecture and robotics. School never seemed to speak to him though, because Wright transferred between three different schools, Louisiana State University, Louisiana Tech, and the New School University in New York. I went to college for five years but never got a degree. He said with a smile to the San Francisco Chronicle reporter. Instead of pursuing a degree, he pursued his passion, games. His first video game, Raid on Bungling Bay, was released in 1984 for the Commodore 64 and was inspired by the board war games he enjoyed as a kid. It was a simple game where the player flies over islands, bombing them in the style of a shoot 'em up. While he was building the game though, he found that he enjoyed making the levels more than he enjoyed actually making the game. And that's where the inspiration for SimCity came from. Although the catalyst to make the game came from Raid on Bungling Bay, a lot of his inspiration came from The Seventh Sally, a short story in Stanislaw Lem's book, The Siberiad, which talks about a miniature world with miniature inhabitants who created a fully functioning civilization but on a micro scale. And then there was the backbone of SimCity's mechanics, which can be drawn from the work of J. Wright Forrester and his book on urban design and planning, Urban Dynamics, which was written after Forrester's interactions with a former Boston mayor. With all of these, Will Wright started development on a game called Micropolis, later changed to SimCity, and finished working on it in 1985. And almost immediately, his game met little positive reception. The game wouldn't be published for another four years, because game publishers at the time were wary about the marketability of a game that could not really be won or lost. Maxis, the development studio founded by Will Wright and Jeff Braun in 1987 to help publish the game, bounced around trying to find someone to help publish the game with them and finally, in 1989, they struck a deal with Broderbund who had previously denied them a publishing deal only a couple years earlier. And this time, the reception was more than just positive. SimCity went on to not just be a success, but a massive hit, selling over 1 million copies by the end of 1992 and receiving numerous Game of the Year awards in 1989. It went beyond just being a financial hit though, it redefined the gaming world altogether. It was the pioneering game in the urban simulation genre, and redefined what games could be. It didn't have to just be about winning or losing, but about building something great. It would even go on to inspire other games such as the massively successful Civilization series, but that's something we'll save for another time. SimCity, now often called SimCity Classic because of the reboot sharing the same name, could be played on any number of consoles. It was most popular on the PC and on the SNES. Fun fact about the SNES version, the monster that could destroy the city was actually replaced with a giant Bowser. But the game could also be played on the Atari, the Amiga, Macintosh, the ZX Spectrum, Palm OS, 
and there was even a multiplayer version on the SGI Indigo. Point is, the game was spread far and wide. But what made it so fun? Why did people enjoy playing it so much? Let's find out together. Alright, it's time to begin the gameplay portion of this video. Um, just gonna... I don't know. Put something together that's... A little bit of everything, hopefully. This is interesting because I've seen this from people that actually own real copies of the game. I'm just using like a sort of uh, an abandoned wear copy, so this doesn't really matter. But for people that bought the game, it actually came with I think it's like a booklet or like a page of different symbols that look like this, and you have to put the word that it shows or the name that it shows there. But for this version, it doesn't matter what you put. It just says you passed. So I know there are versions that have music. I don't know how to turn on music. So we're just going to have these lovely 8-bit sound effects going on, which I actually don't mind. There's uh, some um, charm to them. But yeah, I mean, it's got all the, the basics of a... Some city game right here. One thing that uh, is interesting though is the fact is the way the zones work. As you can see, the zones are just big rectangles, and these are individual it's like a it's like a three by three grid of zones that you put down in individual blocks, which is neat, I think. And then every year it gives you figures. So I can raise the taxes if I want to. Right now I think I'm fine. And just keep it going. Oh, shoot. The right click is bulldoze, I forgot about that. Okay, so commercial is still not in demand and suddenly it is. Now we're making money, which is nice. Uh, we need more industry. That's not what I wanted to do. Honestly, I don't know if you can, but I bet I bet you can probably play this with just a keyboard, considering how old this game is. And I imagine that would actually be probably a fair bit easier, honestly. Pretty simple game. Nothing too extreme. Um, here, let me... So I can do this maneuver, I believe. and just build some railroad. Ah, see, now I'm, I'm losing a lot more money than I was before because I built the fire station, I built the police station, and I probably don't need to allocate all this money, so actually I won't. Ah, I'm actually might run out of money here soon. We'll see. Oh yeah, I forgot how loud the disasters are. The disasters are insanely loud in this game. They are oppressive. Uh, there was a flood. I don't know if you saw, there was some water over here that came in. What I really like about this is that it's actually still surprisingly fun. Um, I'm actually a big fan of retro games like this. I always have been. But the... I don't know, there's just there's just an appeal to the simplicity of it, but it's not... it's not boring. It's simple, but it's not boring. It's a thing. Like, I could really see myself sinking a lot of time into a game like this just because it's... you know... actually fairly addicting. I forget what happens. Cash flow. I, do they just... Do things just start falling apart? Yeah, it just stops funding things. Until you make more money, I guess. Let's see what happens if I... Uh... Jesus Christ. Alright, let's see. Where's the flooding? Oh, flooding's done already. It's a fun little entry. Because I, I know that... Here, I'll pause it real quick so I don't get any more screeches in my ears. 
Okay, so it crashed on me. Um, I was going to try and pull up a different version of SimCity that I had installed anyways. But this is... I don't remember why I had two versions of SimCity installed on my computer, but I do. And this is the other one that I played. And I, just for fun, a while ago, I actually played or I made my own city. Just, you know, for the fun of it. And as you can see, the graphics in this one are... are little more simplistic not sure what that noise was a little more simplistic but this is you know this is what happens when you run the city for a little while you can actually build up a nice nice little you know development um and just show you guys some of the some of the ways that you can analyze your city there you can look at you know just like your city in general the power grid see if there's any gaps in it where the power stations are you can look at transportation see the roads and the rails see population density see where it's densest population growth i guess that's where it's growing or shrinking you can look up traffic density so uh, pollution crime uh, land value and you can look at police coverage so there's plenty of little things to look at there but then there's also uh different graphs that you can look at so you can look at over the past 10 years or last 120 years. So you can see industry growth, you can see pollution tracked along that, cash flow. Uh, there's not really any, you know, number indicators on there to signify what this means, but, you know. Commerce, you can see how that grew. Population, you can see how that's growing pretty well. Uh, crime. So you got, you got a fair number of uh, stuff to actually look at your games there. Or look at your your stats for your game evaluation so you can look at you know basically how you're doing um is the mayor doing a good job 78 percent yes 22 percent no i'm doing a pretty good, jo good job in this one as you can see there's one other thing though that i didn't really talk about that is the scenarios the scenarios were actually a suggestion from broderbund because they wanted the game to be more like a game in the sense that there are objectives and missions and uh, win fail type situations but so yeah that is pretty much it for SimCity Classic it's fun uh, it's very limited in a lot of ways but honestly I would give it a try I mean I enjoyed it thoroughly when I played it a while ago and I am enjoying it again playing it now even for just a little bit to show you guys and I really do recommend playing this. SimCity was a genre-defining game that had a massive impact, but few people would say that the original SimCity was the best, even if it does surprisingly hold up today. In the next video, we'll start getting into the true rise of the SimCity series, where we tackle the game that many people still claim is their favorite, SimCity 2000. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed my video and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on to see more of my content. Leave a comment with your thoughts on this video or topics for the future and if you're interested I've also made plenty of other videos so go check those out too. This has been Historical Hindsight and I'll be seeing you soon.